Let's talk about the airspeed indicator. Let's talk about how the airspeed indicator functions. If you're getting your instrument, you might be asked about your a little more in depth the uh, instruments in the airplane and how they work. So, as we know, the pitot-static uh, system, um, the pitot tube provides information only to the airspeed indicator, and then the static uh, system provides indications or information to the airspeed, the altimeter, and the vertical speed indicator. So the way it, the airspeed indicator works, we'll talk about the VSI and altimeter some other time, uh, but the way the airspeed indicator works is the airspeed or this needle really moves to the right clockwise and generates an indication with the numbers that we wrote down on the face of it. Uh, the more ram air pressure that goes in through the pitot tube and inflates the aneroid wafers inside, the more ram air pressure, the more that balloon inflates, the higher the indication. So it's a function of air molecules ramming through our pitot tube. And that's what indicated airspeed is. And that's also why we fly with indicated airspeed, because when we fly at a high-density altitude airport, the air molecules are further apart. But as long as I maintain my constant same final approach speed that I always do, my true, my true speed is way high in order to keep ramming into those molecules at 8,000 feet. But my indicated is the same. So the amount of energy on the airplane is the same with the indicated airspeed. And that's why we fly with indicated, because it's the closest speed that we can get to resemble the amount of energy that we're carrying. Because true airspeed and all those uh, stuff, they don't, they won't resemble that. That changes all the time. It's not constant. So the way the airspeed indicator works is we want to know how much air molecules are wrapping through the pitot tube. Now here's the problem with static pressure, the or ambient pressure. Ambient pressure exists everywhere, and it makes itself through any hole and any place it can go through. So guess what types of pressure enter the pitot tube? Ram and static. So we have a problem. We have both ram and static pressure inflating, static being atmospheric pressure, inflating that balloon, generating an airspeed. But it's not 100% accurate because we don't care about the static. I only care how fast I'm moving forward, hitting those air molecules. I don't care about the amount that the atmospheric pressure is inflating that balloon as well. So we have a problem. We have static plus ram, but we only want the ram. We don't want the static. So the way we get rid of the static and cancel the static out is actually in the outer casing of the aneroid wafers inside the instrument, we send static pressure as well. So we have aneroid wafers, and then we have the outer, outside the aneroid wafers, inside this instrument. So we have inside the aneroid wafers, we have ramp plus static pressure. Outside of the aneroid wafers, we have static pressure. Outside of the outside of the aneroid wafers, we have static pressure. And so if you think about it, we have RAM plus static battling it out with static. So the static cancels the static out because we have two same statics battling it out. So they cancel each other out. Five golf, no try between you and Trona. Radar search terminates five VFR free change crew. Have a good day. VFR, thanks for help. One, two, and five golf. <laughs> and so we have RAM plus static. We have RAM plus static battling it out with static. So the statics cancel each other out, and then we're left with only ram pressure, ram air pressure. And that is the airspeed indicator. Because if we didn't have that static on the outside of the outer casing, um, canceling the static inside the aneroid wafers out, it would be inaccurate. Because it would, be, it would also include the atmospheric pressure being part of that pressure which generates the indication, and that would be 100% true. All I care about is how fast am I interacting with those air molecules moving forward. And so we have, again, ramp plus static, battling it out with static on the outside of the aneroid wafers. The two statics cancel each other out, and um, we're left with only ram air pressure. And that's a general tiny intro as to how the airspeed indicator operates and functions. So I hope that makes sense.